Hey, it's Mike from Production Crate, and today I'm going to show you guys how to actually retexture one of our assets. If you've ever been downloading one of our vehicles or props or something, and you just wish it could be a different color or cleaner or dirtier or something like that. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that using Substance Painter. I'm actually going to download this model right here. It's a motorcycle that we just put up. The textures are already pretty excellent, but I just want to make it different. What you're going to get when you download the motorcycle is an FBX and then a folder full of textures. So what we want to do is go into Substance Painter and I'm going to go File New. And we can actually start with just the Adobe Standard Material, this PBR Metallic Roughness Material. And I'm going to add in the FBX. So there's the Motorcycle FBX right there. And for this, we're going to go 4K. Best quality is always best. And then we want to actually import the textures that came with it. Because I don't want to do the whole texture from scratch. I just want to make some adjustments. So I'm going to import all of the textures that come with the model. And we'll just hit OK. I'm gonna make my interface look as good as possible. So I like to turn on the shadows. They're usually a little bit too stark so we can turn down the opacity. And I'm also going to turn on my temporal anti-aliasing. It's just gonna make everything look a little sharper. What we need to be able to start texturing is something called mesh maps. If I press the B key, I can cycle through right here. It says ID, ambient occlusion, curvature. These are all input maps that we need to make our own custom textures. And we can see right now they're blank. So we actually need to create those. The way we're going to do this is go over here to our texture set settings. And if we scroll down to where it says select normal map and select ambient occlusion map, we want to plug those two in. Whenever you download a model from online, it might not always have an ambient occlusion, but it should always have a normal map. So I'm going to click normal map and hit the normal map right here. Now, again, this should be enough, but we just happen to also have ambient occlusion. So I'm going to drop that one in too. It's this one right here. And I can go over here to bake mesh maps. What we're going to do is create these maps here, which are going to help us create our finished textures. Now we already have a normal map, so I'm going to uncheck that. We also already have the AO map, so I'm going to uncheck that. Uh, let's make it 4K so it matches the rest of our project. Now the really important one for this is the ID map. I'm going to click on ID here, and where it says color source, I'm going to switch this to mesh ID. What that will do for us is it's going to let us mask each individual part of the motorcycle so I could drop different materials on different sections of the model. And this is a personal preference, but I like to go to random mode just so all the colors are vastly different makes it easier to see. When you have models like this that are made up of lots of little parts where they're all touching and overlapping, sometimes it's a good idea to go to curvature and where it says self-intersection always, switch that to only say mesh name. And that's gonna make sure that these little nuts and bolts that are touching each other don't cross contaminate each other. All right, once we have those settings set up, I'm gonna go ahead and press bake motorcycle. Or if you have multiple texture sets, you wanna hit bake all, bake motorcycle. And you can see it's creating all of these maps that we're missing and press OK. I'm not going to go too deep into how Substance Painter works, but just a very quick overview. If you press B, you can cycle through all the maps that were created. So we can see ambient occlusion is here, and this picks out all the deep recesses so we can put dirt and dust in there. Curvature picks out the sharp edges so we can have chipped paint and have all the edges be scratched. Uh, position just is a gradient so we can make the front of the bike dirtier than the back of the bike and the top and the bottom and all that. And then we have World Space Normal, which is going to allow us to mask our dirt and our dust and mud to different sides of the model. So you can see the top sides are green. We can put all the dust up there if we wanted to. And then lastly, we have the ID map. This is the one that's really important. You can see how each individual part of the model is a different color. So I can drag metal here and plastic there and whatever I want. So when you're done looking at the maps, just press M for material. Now at this point, you could just start from scratch if you wanted to. You could just start dragging materials on the model. I don't really want to start from scratch. I want to start from the texture that came from the website. So I'm going to go plug in the maps that come with the model, and then I'll just change a few parts. So if I go to my layer palette, I'm going to make a new blank uh, fill layer right here. And what this does is it just makes a layer that's white. So if I want to plug in the textures we already have, I'm going to click right here, the textures, and I'm going to search for motorcycle. Here I have my base color channel. I'm going to go grab my base color texture, drop that in, and you should see it update in just a second. There is no height map, so we can skip that. Next would be roughness. So here's roughness. I'll just drop that there and metallic. So we can see it looks pretty much the way it was supposed to look uh, straight from the store. A couple things that are missing. These are supposed to be transparent glass and these gauges and these tail lights are supposed to be glowing. So what we need to do is plug in our opacity map right here and the emissive map. But you'll notice that there's no channel for that. So we need to add those. If I go to my texture set settings right here, here's my available channels. We have color, height, roughness, metallic, and normal. I can hit the little plus sign right here to add emissive. So now we have an emissive channel. I can turn that on right here under the properties. 
And then if I click, I see there's no opacity. There's like sheen opacity, there's other stuff, but I don't see opacity here. So if you don't see the channels you need, we need to change the shader or the, the type of material that we're using. So I'm gonna go really quick up to my shader settings, which is this little sphere, the little ball. And right here's that default ASM, it's called Adobe Standard Material. If you click this, you can switch to a different material that does support transparency. So this one right here is called PBR Metal Rough with Alpha Blending. So I'll click that guy. And now I should be able to click the little plus sign from before and add opacity. And let's just turn that on. Cool, back to my layers, back to my properties. Notice that here at the bottom, I now have emissive and opacity. So let's grab those, opacity. And you should see that the headlights have turned transparent. And we can make them glow by using the emissive map. Boom, there we go. The gauges should be lit up too now, and the uh, tail lights are all red. All right, so now the cool part. Let's make some adjustments. So I'm gonna go right here and I'm just gonna get rid of motorcycle, click on this far left button for the base materials. And let me just show you how this works. Let's say I wanna make this part here carbon fiber. So you could search for carbon fiber. I happen to see it right here. But just so you know, you can type in keywords like metal and it'll filter it out. But I like this carbon fiber, so let's grab that. And if I drag it on the model, it's gonna appear on the entire model, which is not what I'm looking for. So let me press undo. But if I hold down control, I can drag and drop it to these different groups, these different sections. So I can hold down control and drop it on this part right here. And it looks like it worked, but it looks like it's too big. The scale of the texture is off. So I'm gonna go right up here to my layer. I always adjust the scale. So let's just turn that up. And now we've got carbon fiber. You can adjust some other things too, if you need to. Um, there's roughness values. So if it's too shiny for you, just turn the roughness up and it'll kind of match the rest of the motorcycle. Let's try another one. Let's make these little nuts and bolts gold. If I press B, I can see that these little nuts and bolts are isolated. Press M to go back. So I'm gonna use pure brass and just control drag them right there. Now this is totally non-destructive. So if you get in trouble, <laughs> you can just delete these layers or hide them and it will all go back to normal. So don't be afraid to, to experiment. Let's try something a little bit more complex. We can try a smart material. As you can see, what we have here is these base materials. If I click on these, they have their own parameters and they have a layer mask right here, which is what isolates it to different parts of the model. A smart material, if you've never used one before, can seem really complicated, but really just think of it as a folder that's full of materials. So it's a material made up of materials. So I can search for metal, and there's one pretty cool one here called Steel Paint Scrape Dry. And it's kind of this red scratchy metal. Let's put that somewhere, like on this um, fender. So I'm gonna hold down control and drop it right there. And notice that it's not just a, a painted material, it in a smart way was able to pick out the edges of my model. The only reason that's possible is because we created these mesh maps, like this curvature, so it knows where the edges are. But notice over here in my layers, if I wanna modify this, I can't really click on it. If I click on it, I don't get any properties. And that's because it's a folder that's full of other materials. So they can get pretty complex pretty quick. My recommendation whenever you're using a smart material for the first time is to turn every layer off inside of it from top to bottom and then just start at the bottom and work your way up. So I've turned everything off and I'm just down here at base metal. It's a little bit too shiny for me so I'm just going to increase the roughness of that metal. Let's turn this next layer on which is called paint and cool we got this red paint but I'd rather have yellow. So let's go with yellow like that. Maybe a little more orange. There we go. Next one is just roughness variations. And if you click that, it's pretty subtle, but it just changes the shininess of the paint. Now we have a dirt layer. Let's turn that one on. It looks like kind of cartoony, the, the color. It's a little bit too saturated. So maybe I'll just make it look more like a gray dust. And then this last layer is a filter for sharpening it up. So every smart material that you use is gonna be different. You just have to dissect them the way I just described. Start at the bottom and work your way up. All right, so we're gonna do one more here. Uh, I like this machinery uh, smart material. So I'm gonna hold down control and let's drop it onto this arm right here that's holding the, the wheel. So this one's really cool, but it's way too much. We gotta turn that down a little bit, that rust and that dirt. So let's start at the bottom and work our way up. So I'm gonna turn on base metal. Pretty cool, but it's too shiny. So let's just go to the roughness, crank that up a little bit, cool. Next layer is called dirt. It's a subtle change. I kinda wanna go a little bit more opaque. And if I notice here, these layers have opacity sliders, just like in Photoshop. So I'm just gonna turn the opacity slider up and you can see the grunge kind of becoming a little more prominent. Next is a dust layer. I think I'll leave that one how it is. That looks pretty cool. And then the last one is rust. This is the one that looks really bad. We have to fix it. It's cool, but it's just too heavy handed. So now we're actually gonna do uh, an adjustment of the mask. So just like in Photoshop, you have your layer 
and then the layer mask, which controls where it's falling on the model. So if I click on the rust mask, this little box on the right, it'll open up all of the things that are creating that mask. And in this one, it's pretty simple. It's just this mask editor. So I'm gonna click on that little guy right there. And there's tons of options associated with this, but I'm just gonna go to the top and turn the balance slider down. And you can see the rust and the mud will kind of fade out. Maybe I'll turn down the contrast too, so it looks a little softer. You don't have to keep applying this material over and over to the model. Let's say I want the same material to be on this part, but I don't want to adjust it over and over and I don't want to keep dragging it. We can alter the mask of the material. So let me close this folder and I'll click on this mask for machinery. Remember when we drag and drop it holding control, all the colors come up? Well, it creates this thing called color selection. So I can click that, go to my color picker right here, and then just start adding it to other parts of the model. So let's do this part. And notice I'm, I still have just one layer, but I'm just adding it to more parts. And if you mess up, you can just hit the little minus sign right here to get rid of it. All right, I think that's good. Let me show you one last thing, and that's how to export your textures, how to save them. So I'm gonna go up to File, Export Textures, and there's an output template. This just depends on which engine you're gonna render in. So just open this up. 90% of the time, you're gonna use either uh, Metallic Roughness or Specular Gloss. I'm just gonna keep it on PBR Metallic Roughness. And where it says Padding, I just like to use dilation plus default background color. And let's just point it where we want it to go. Because I was raised by animals, I'm gonna save it to my desktop and export. And it's just gonna generate all of the updated textures. Looks a little crazy, but there it is. You can see it's got that yellow crusty paint. Cool, so that's pretty much it. Leave in the comments if you wanna see any other Substance Painter tips. Uh, and be sure to share your results with us if you update this model or any other one, we wanna see it. Make it awesome. Make it more awesome than we did. <laughs> <laughs>